Once we have gathered data, it's helpful to be able to organize it. Raw data is data in its original form, which can be very difficult to read and understand. But a frequency distribution is a way to organize raw data in table form using classes and frequency. We do this by placing each raw data value into a category known as a class. And the frequency of the class is the number of the data values in that class. If my range of the data is very large, we typically want to group the data into classes that are more than one unit in width. This is known as a grouped frequency distribution. Here I have an example of a grouped frequency distribution. We have the classes in the left column and the frequency in the right. What this means is that between the values of 10 and 19, we have nine. So we have nine numbers that are between 10 and 19. We have 15 numbers between 20 and 29, 13 numbers between 30 and 39, etc. These first numbers, the 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, and 70, these are known as the lower class limits. They tell us the smallest value that is still allowed in the class. On the other hand, the numbers on the right, the 19, 29, 39, 49, 59, 69, and 79, these are my upper class limits. They tell us the largest number that's allowed in each class. So this first class between 10 and 19, it says the smallest number allowed is 10 and the largest number allowed is 19. My last column is then the frequency. This tells us how many of my data values are in each of the classes. So as an example, there are eight data values between 50 and 59. In addition to limits, a frequency distribution also has lower and upper class boundaries. The class boundaries are the numbers used to separate the classes so that there are no gaps in the frequency distribution. And the gaps are due to the limits. The class boundaries are halfway between the upper class limit of one class and the lower class limit of the next. Many people have difficulty with finding the class boundaries given the class limits. In general, the class boundary should have one additional place value, and it should always end in a 5. Let's go back to our previous distribution. My first class boundary is between the upper class limit of one class and the lower class limit of the next, so halfway between 19 and 20. This is 19.5. We then look halfway between 29 and 30. This will be 29.5. Halfway between 39 and 40. This will be 39.5. Halfway between 49 and 50. This will be 49.5. Halfway between 59 and 60, this will be 59.5. Halfway between 69 and 70, this will be 69.5. For my first one, this empty one, if I look through I can see that these are 69.5, 59.5, 49.5, 39.5, 29.5, 19.5. .5. So this one will be 9.5 since they all have a difference of 10. And if I look at my very last one, I can see that these also have a difference of 10, 19.5, 29.5, 39.5, 49.5, 59.5, 60.5, 70.5, 5. So next will be 79.5. So we can see my class boundaries have one extra place value from the class, and, and they all end in a five. The next thing I wanna look at is the class width. 
In general, for the class width, we need to subtract the lower class limit of one class from the lower class limit of the next class. My first three classes from my example before were 10 to 19, 20 to 29, and 30 to 39. So to find my width, we would do 20 minus 10 to get 10. Equivalently, I could have done 30 minus 20 and still gotten 10. One wrong thing that people do quite often is to subtract lower and upper class limits. To see the width is 19 minus 10 and to get nine. However, this is in fact incorrect way to do it. We need to subtract a lower class limit from the lower class limit of the next class. There are some general guidelines for choosing class limits and class width for frequency distribution. First, there should be between five and 20 classes. Any smaller than five when we're grouping our data into too large of classes, and if we have more than 20, we're spreading our data, data out too much. It is preferable, but not absolutely necessary that the class width is an odd number. This is because if we then try to find the midpoint, it would be a whole number. If our width is an even value, then our class midpoint would be a decimal. Classes must be mutually exclusive. This means that there should be no overlap. It should be very clear which group each data value falls into. Classes are also continuous. This means there's no gaps in our classes. We want to go from 10 to 19 and 20 to 29, not from 10 to 19 and then 25 to 34. Classes also must be exhaustive. This means that every data value should fit into a class. I shouldn't have a data value that doesn't fit anywhere. And finally, all of my classes must be equal in width. I shouldn't have varying class width from class to class. Now that we have our guidelines, let's look at actually constructing our classes. The first step is to determine your highest and lowest values in your data set. We then use these values to find the range, which is the highest minus the lowest. We're then going to divide the range by the number of classes that we want. Whatever we get in step three, we're going to round it up which means if we get a decimal like 5.2, we round up to six. If we get something like 7.8, we round up to eight. If we were to get a whole number like 11, we also need to round that up to 12. And this is gonna be our width. The first lower limit for our classes is going to be the lowest value, which we determine in step one. We then repeatedly add the width to determine the lower limits. Once we have our lower limits, we can find our upper limits. And once we have both the upper and lower limits, we can find the class boundaries. And finally, we determine the frequencies. Let's look at this data set here. We need to start by finding the largest and smallest values. Looking through this data set, we see that the largest is 98 and the smallest is 57. So we need to find the range, which is 98 minus 57 or 41. We then need to determine how many classes we want. This really depends on the data, and for this one, we'll say we're going to do seven classes. So we'll divide by seven to get approximately 5.86. So this tells me that my width, I'll round this number up to be six. For my classes, I'm gonna start at 57, add six to get 63, add six to get 69, add six to get 75, 
add 6 to get 81, add 6 to get 87, and add 6 to get 93, so that I now have 7 classes. Since my next lower limit is 63, my first upper limit will be 62. I then have 68, 74, 80, 86, 92, and 98. Now that we have our limits, we can fill in the boundaries. Halfway between 62 and 63, is 62.5. Between 68 and 69 is 68.5. Between 74 and 75 is 74.5. Between 80 and 81 is 80.5. Between 86 and 87 is 86.5. And between 92 and 93 is 92.5. For the 57 at the top, we would subtract 0.5 to get 56.5. And for the 98 at the bottom, we would add 0.5 to get 98.5. So we now have our boundaries. Now that we have our boundaries, we just go through the data to see how many values are in each class. First one from 57 to 62, we can search this data and see that the only data value that falls here is 57. So that has a frequency of one. Next, we search through to see how many data values are between 63 and 68. I can see that I have this value here of 67 and this value here of 64. So this class would have a frequency of two. Next, let's look for values between 69 and 74. We have one, two, three, four, and five. So that class will have a frequency of five. Next, we look between 75 and 80. We have one, two, three, four, five values. So this class also has a frequency of five. Looking between 81 and 86, we have one, two, three, four, five. So another class with a frequency of five. Looking between 87 and 92, we have one, two, three, four values. So this class would have a frequency of four. Finally, between 93 and 98, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight values. So this class would have a frequency of eight and we now have our frequency distribution. If you would like to see Professor Pierce make more videos like this one, you can support her on Patreon in the link below. Any and all support means a lot to her. It allows her not only to make more videos, but it also allows her to campaign for free and accessible online education to conferences and other universities. Thank you for watching, and remember, math is for everyone.